This is the sharpest lens ever tested by DxO Mark, a very respectable photography related quality evaluation laboratory, Yanu 85mm f1.8 STF DSM, which we are going to be testing on my Sony FX30 with an APS C size sensor to get about 127mm full frame equivalent. And this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max's new 5x telephoto camera, 120mm full frame equivalent lens, but when you switch to video mode, it gets noticeably narrower. How good is the 12 mega megapixel 5x camera on the iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to Sony's FX30 26 megapixel sensor and the sharpest budget telephoto lens on the market. Let's find out! So let's start with the photos. At the left you can see the iPhone's photos and on the right the Sony. Straight away I can definitely tell that those two images look really similar. And only when we zoom in 10 times we can tell the difference in resolution and megapixels. Of course Sony wins here. Let's get to more interesting stuff. This is the full height portrait but without portrait mode on the iPhone 15 Pro Max 5X camera in Pro Raw and graded. And I would say that everything is in focus, even the buildings on the background. And the Sony with young Nuo 85mm f1.8 lens shows beautiful bokeh and depth. But what if we turn on the portrait mode? Here it is guys, and it looks amazing to be honest. We graded the images as well to match the colors more or less. Let's zoom in four times, and yeah, in this case I can definitely tell a difference, but it's not dramatic and huge. And for pictures from your holiday trip, it's more than enough. Here's the close-up portrait without portrait mode, and as you can tell we do have some background blur with the 5x camera if you get a bit closer to it, but still it's like minor. And look at this creamy and beautiful bokeh from the young no lens, it's gorgeous. And now guys, we've turned on the portrait mode and it looks once again really similar. I can clearly see the imperfections of digital blur of the iPhone, but it's not that dramatic. And if you are not pixel peeping, this image does look pretty nice. But keep in mind guys that you do need to have more or less good lighting conditions. Now let's have a look at the shot of this beautiful car. And once again guys, from this far away, it does look really similar. And one more car shot. If I didn't write the text which camera is which, I bet that you could guess wrong which camera is which. It's important to notice guys that the portrait mode and the artificial blur sometimes does give you some artifacts. And uh, setting it up to f1.4 is not always the best idea. I found that f4, f5.6, f7 most of the time works the best. Maybe f2.8 sometimes. So now let's have a look at the video, both are shot in log, Apple log on the left and S log 3 on the right. And here you can see the difference in background blur between those two cameras. It's really dramatic guys. I had to stop down to f11 on my APS-C camera to get more or less similar background blur. I would even say that f11 still looks blurrier than the 5x camera on the iPhone. And on this example you can definitely tell the difference in terms of bokeh and all around separation because on the iPhone everything is in focus whereas on the Sony and the young new lens we do get this pop and blur. Unfortunately cinematic mode does not work with the 5x camera. But if you don't need a shallow depth of field the iPhone shows great performance. To be honest guys from this far away I can hardly tell a difference thanks to Apple lock we don't have over sharpened image anymore. But if we zoom in, of course, we do have the difference. The Sony is sharper, it's less noisy, there is less noise reduction, and also the iPhone is pretty shaky on the wind. It was a very windy day. But on this example with the skyscrapers, I cannot tell a difference. I'm looking at this image on the full screen and I cannot tell a difference, guys. So for those types of shots, iPhone suits perfectly. In terms of autofocus tracking, the Sony and the Young Null lens are showing great results. The iPhone is not that good at least in terms of focus tracking. And here my wife just leaves the frame and then enters back and I would say that Sony is flawless and iPhone is doing an okay job. But the minimum focusing distance of the 5x lens is not the best. As you can tell from this example, the young Null lens can focus much closer and it's not the best like macro lens in the world. And what's the most interesting to me is the stabilization tests. So in this example, I'm just hand-holding both cameras. On the Sony, we have Steady Shot Active and the standard camera app, so the regular stabilization on the iPhone. And I can say that for static shots, the Active Steady Shot on the Sony is working fine. But then when we try to walk with the Ninja Walk handheld, you can definitely tell that the Steady Shot Active is doing not the best job. And the stability of the 5X lens, 120mm equivalent, is just rock solid if you hold it still and do your best ninja walk. The Sony also does record gyroscopic data which you can use in Catalyst Browse software. Here is the 40% stabilization and the regular stabilization of the iPhone and still 
Even with this huge crop and gyroscopic data, the iPhone is showing better results. But when you turn on action mode on the iPhone, the resolution drops to 2.8K, but the stabilization is through the roof. If you do love it as much as I do, smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. So here is the action mode in action. You got my joke. So as you can tell guys, it is much, much better than the gyroscopic stabilization of the Sony and we need to have extremely short shutter speeds for both systems to stabilize the best way. Of course, the image is not as crisp, not as sharp as in the 4K mode, but still 2.8K is fine for most situations and the level of stability you get is just through the roof. It's handheld, just walking with both cameras, one on top of the other, and the difference is just huge. To make this type of shot from a riding taxi with a camera, I would definitely use a gimbal. But with the iPhone, I simply did it handheld. And keep in mind that you do have a huge crop in this mode. So now let's have a look at the night shots and this is not really comparable, guys. The image on the iPhone is really noisy and falls apart and the noise reduction is pretty huge. In non-log mode, it might look a bit better, but it would be over sharpened for sure. And here is the difference in terms of bokeh. Once again, nothing to compare here. Yangdo has beautiful bokeh, by the way. And a couple of night mode photos. So on the iPhone, I had my night mode on the tripod for 10 seconds, 12 megapixel photo. And on the Sony, I had my ISO set to minimum f1.8 and one fifth of a second shutter speed. And look at the difference in terms of dynamic range on the trees. They are completely crushed on the iPhone. And when we zoom in five times, the amount of detail we have on the Sony is much bigger. And one more big issue with the iPhone is those stupid lens flares and reflections of the sensor. It's so hard to eliminate those during the night time. And all the lenses, the main sensor, the ultra wide, the telephoto, they all struggle with this. And the resolution is not on par as well. To conclude guys, 5X lens is so fun to use, that's for sure. Especially if the portrait mode does good enough cutout, you can get some outstanding results. And also the video stabilization of this lens in good lighting conditions, and especially with the action mode, pure magic. But keep in mind that this lens does not work in cinematic mode and you won't get such beautiful bokeh like you do on the Yangnuo 85mm f1.8 lens on a full frame or even on an APS-C camera. And also the 5x lens is hard to use in video mode in strong winds because you do get a lot of micro jitter from it. And finally the low light performance is nowhere near the quality of even an APS-C mirrorless camera with a fast lens. And those nasty sensor reflections guys, I'm so tired of those. As for now, I'm glad that we're getting more reach and most importantly more fun with the 5X camera on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I enjoy using it and even shot almost the entire product commercial with this 5X lens. So watch this video next and I'ma see you there.